The second part of section 3.2 talks about the second method for solving systems of linear equations, and that's called linear combinations. More popularly, however, it is called the elimination method, which is what I'm going to call it. Now, I've got three rules to use the elimination method. If you need to pause the video, please do to write them down. First of all, when you use the elimination method, my favorite method, the goal is to eliminate one of the two variables by adding the two equations together. Eliminate one of the variables. The equations must be in standard form is rule number two. Standard form is AX plus BY equals C. Step three or rule three. When you write it in standard form, put the X's above the X's and the Y's above the Y's when beginning the problem. It'll make your life so much easier. So, again, pause the video if you need to, but those are the three rules that we are going to follow. Now, let's talk about some problems. First of all, I'm going to write up here a system of equations. 2X plus 3Y equals 5. And x minus 3y is equal to 1. Now, if you remember from the prior slide, the goal is to add the two equations together and see if you can eliminate one of the variables. Well, the reason I write the x's above the x's and the y's above the y's is to see if I can add them together and get one of the letters to go away. And obviously, in this particular problem, that's the case, because 3y minus 3y is going to cancel out. And so I'll add the whole equation. I'll get 2x plus 1x, which is 3x, is equal to 5 plus 1 is equal to 6. And I can divide by 3. And I can find out the value of my x variable is 2. And that's the whole idea behind the elimination method. But the key is to take one or two seconds and examine the equation to see if you can eliminate one of the letters by adding them together. Is that possible? Now, I'm going to put up here a different sort of equation. This one's going to require a little bit more strategy on our part. 2x plus 3y is equal to 10. And x plus y is equal to 5. Now, in this particular case, the question is, can I add the two equations and get one of the letters to go away? And the answer to this problem obviously is no, because 2x plus x is 3x, 3y plus 1y is 4y, and I did not eliminate one of the variables. This is a no-no. You don't want to do that. That will not work. So you need a different technique or strategy to solve these type of problems. So here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this problem for you. And you can pause the video and write this down. 2x plus y is equal to 6. And the second equation is y minus 8x is equal to 1. All right, well, again, close inspection. First of all, you're going to notice they're in standard form. However, this one is backward. I need to take that negative 8x and put it out front. So I'm going to write it negative 8x, and then the plus y is equal to 1. So I just change it around so my x's are below my x's and my y's are below my y's. Now I look at the equation and think, can I add the two equations together right now? Well, the answer to that question is no, because 2x and negative 8x don't add to 0, and these two y's don't add to 0. So how do you solve this? Well, you solve it by multiplying one of the equations by some constant. I noticed that this number 2, if this number was an 8, then I could add the equations together and get one of the letters to go away. And so that is what I am going to do at this particular step. I am going to times the top equation by the number 4. I'm going to take that equation, I'm going to times by 4, and what I'm going to do is distribute. 4 times 2x makes 8x. 4 times 1y makes plus 4y, and you got to times the answer as well. 4 times 6 is 24. 
Now I can erase the top equation in red. I'm done with it. I don't need it anymore because I got the blue equation at the bottom. Now I can add them together because my x's will cancel out and then 1y plus 4y is 5y, which is equal to 1 plus 24, which is 25. And if I divide by 5, I get y is 5. Now, that's good, but I've only finished half the problem. What I need to do is I need to take that y value and I need to stick it in there into one of the two equations and solve it. So I'm going to take the blue equation. I have 8x plus 4 times what y is, and we found out y is 5, so I'm going to substitute that in there, which is equal to 24. Now I just solve this equation for x. 8x plus 4 times 5 is 20, which equals 24. I'm going to minus 20 from both sides, and I get 8x equals 4. And then I divide by 8, and I find out that x is equal to a half. And that is the solution to my equation, my system of equations. The solution is the ordered pair half comma 5. If we were to graph these two equations, you would find out that the two lines would intersect. And we, re we studied already in a prior video that the intersection point is the solution. And that's how you solve using the elimination method. All right. Now, let's look at a more challenging problem. Let's look at this one. We have 2x is equal to negative 10 minus 4y, and we have 3x plus 3y is equal to negative 3. Well, first of all, I notice that the top equation is not in standard form, so I got to get the y to the other side. So I'm going to add 4y to both sides, and I'm going to leave the x first, ter the x term first, the y term second, and I end up getting my equation that is in red. So now I'm going to erase the top equation. We don't need it anymore. Now, can I add the numbers together and get one of the letters to cancel out? Well, the answer is no. Well, the next thing, does 2 go into 3? No. Does 3 go into 4? No. Well, therefore, I am going to have to multiply both equations by some number. Now, I'm going to get rid of the x. It doesn't matter which letter you get rid of. But if I had the coefficient in front of the x be 6, I know that this would work. So I'm going to take the top equation and multiply the whole thing by 3. So I will get 6x plus 12y equals negative 30. And then I'm going to times the bottom equation by negative 2. So therefore, I get negative 6x. And then negative 2 times 6y is negative 6y. And negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And now I can add the two equations together because my x's will cancel out, leaving you a 6y equals negative 24. And if I divide by 6, I get y is equal to negative 4. Now, again, it doesn't matter which equation I put my negative 4 into. So let's do the top one, the one that's in red. 2 times x plus 4 times my y value, which is negative 4. I'm going to put that in, is equal to negative 10. Now I just solve this. 2x minus 16 equals negative 10. And I add 16 to both sides. And I get 2x is equal to 6. And I divide by 2, and I find out x is 3. Therefore, I have a solution. The intersection point of my two lines is the point x is 3 and y is negative 4. And that's how you multiply both equations in order to solve the problem. Now it's your turn. I would like you to solve this problem. 5x plus 6y is equal to negative 9. And 2x is equal to negative y plus 2. Pause the video and solve this and see if you get it right. Well, hopefully the first thing you did is write the bottom equation in standard form by adding y. Getting 2x plus y is equal to 2. So then I can erase this equation. Now, what I notice 
is if I multiply the bottom equation by negative 6, I would have a negative 6 right here, and therefore I would be able to add the two equations together and get 1 to go away. So negative 6 times 2x is negative 12x. Negative 6 times y is negative 6y. And negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. And then I can erase this equation in the middle. Now I'm going to add the two equations together. And when I do that, I get negative 7x. These two cancel out is equal to negative 21. And if I divide by negative 7, I get x is 3. Works out beautifully. Now, again, it doesn't matter which equation you use. I'm going to use the blue one. 5 times 3 plus 6y is equal to negative 9. Now, this is equal to 15 plus 6y, which is equal to negative 9. I minus 15 to both sides, and I get 6y equals negative 24. And when I divide by 6, y is negative 4. And I hope that's what you got for the solution. x is 3, and y is negative 4. If you got questions, please ask during class. But let's look at one more thing. We talked about in the prior video in section 3.1, there are three types of solutions to these problems. All the problems I just did on this video involve where the graphs intersect. But now let's talk about identities and contradictions. Here I have a system of equations by the identities. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 3. And when I do that, I get negative 6x minus 3y equals negative 24. Well, if I add these equations together, the x's cancel out and the y's cancel out, leaving me 0 equals, and 24 minus 24 is also 0. Well, when any time you get the, a number equal to itself, this is called the identity, and therefore the solution... The solution is all real numbers. Any numbers will work for x and y as a solution. And if you recall from the last video, this is the situation where the two lines lie right on top of each other. They have the same slope and the same y-intercept. Therefore, the solution is all real numbers. Let's look at contradictions. I'm going to times the top equation by negative 3 over here. And when I do that, I get negative 6x and then negative 3y, and that makes negative 24. Well, when I add these together, the x's cancel out and the y's cancel out, leaving me 0. However, over here, I get negative 39. I have two numbers that are not equal to each other and no variables left. Therefore, this particular problem has no solution. The reason is because if you were to draw these two lines on the graph, they would be parallel lines with no intersection point. That's the difference between identities and contradictions. Identities, the two numbers will be the same and will be equal with no variables. Contradiction, you'll have two numbers that are different with no variables. And that's how you do the elimination method. If you have further questions, please ask during class.